fun. How are you? I'm looking for all my little toys here and they're, they're good. I'm sitting down today I, because I have to work with my hands. It feels kind of weird. I'd rather be standing like I'm the teacher, but now I'm just one of you, okay? Uh, they're putting on a roof next door. So if you hear banging and all that, I've shut the windows and I think that will make a difference. So um, I have just had a lot of fun doing these and I'm not going anywhere, but what's really the payoff that's coming right now are you guys are sending me pictures and I absolutely love that. So I would like to share with you and um, then I'm gonna show you some red work. I'm gonna talk about what's new at the site and all of that really good stuff, okay? So uh, this, Cheryl, this was the first one, not the first, because there have been a bunch in the comments. So like if you go to my Facebook page, you can just post it right there under comments and everybody can see, and that's probably the best way to do it, right? Oh, also this right here, this is my camera so that when I do the red work, I can get really, I can get in there and show you. So that's pretty cool, huh? But I have to have it hovering um, right next to me. So I see people are joining us from all over the world, which is absolutely lovely. Okay, back to this one. There we go. Dog on it. Okay, let me go up here. There. So here is the first quilt, and this is Cheryl's quilt, and I think it's super fun. I think Cheryl st uh, stuck pretty true to the pattern, and I, I like uh, the red, white, and blue feeling, and I like that, though it's red, white, and blue, Cheryl has thrown pink in, and so she's pushing it a little hard with the uh, color, and to me, that makes it that 10,000 times more interesting, you know, with that. I also like that you used my little birdies and all that. So good job, Cheryl. And uh, my gosh, it's already quilted and bound. Okay, overachiever. We applaud. Yay. So then, th and I hope I have the names all right. Forgive me if I don't. So here's another one from June. And uh, I just think this is absolutely magnificent. I wanna point out a couple things that June has done. And what she's done is she, uh, if you look at some of the bellies, I didn't see this when I first got this piece. I saw something else I'll talk about in a minute. But like if you look in the bellies of like say the pineapple block on the top, there's a bird in there. And then to the right, I think that's a sewing machine. So I can see that you did a lot of fussy cutting with birds and sewing machines and all that. But what really intrigued me most of all was what you have going on in the negative space, the two long strip ones, like the shadows of flowers. I think that's just really super good. And I realize I've lost, there's the other one. Here is Sarah's, there we go. Now Sarah, Sarah did some, Sarah's got some chops here. She wanted to get the handprints in there and 2020, which I think is absolutely lovely. So I believe she told me she upped her sizes to eight uh, inches, I think her block. So, so here's somebody who's taken advantage of this crazy little book that we'll use again and made it better. And I, I do really, really commission you guys to make sure that you do put that it's uh, spring or whatever, uh, COVID, everything that's going on, I would put it on the label because these will be really historically important quilts in my humble opinion. So thank you so, so much. Uh, people, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna work on this pattern here, right? and people were having a hard time finding it on our page. So I'm just gonna run through this, all right? If you don't know where to go to get this thing, you're gonna go to the front page of thequiltshow.com. And you can see to the right there, there is where you go get the PDF. But before we click through to that, we are into the Masterclass Quilt Piecing 2. It is not a separate class from the subscription that you have. It's rolling in as a show number. You can see here it's 2612. 2611 was quilt piecing number one. So people are getting all shook up trying to find it on my Facebook, trying to find it here and there. It is simply a show, but I can 
definitely see how that could be um, misleading. So anyways, when you click that, you're going to go here. It's gonna take you directly to this. And you could see down there in the bottom left, um, it's cut off here because of my overlays. It says, view this project. So you're going to click view this project and then it's going to take you to this page. And this is where the confusion starts. You have to scroll down. You cannot see it here. You can see the rare bear thing. You can see the Tumblr quilt block pattern, but scroll down and it will take you here. And there you've got your PDF. So that's how you get the pattern. And another question, because I talked about this in the book, so I can see the book that Shadow Red work. Uh, um, so uh, three of you ordered it yesterday and I got it out. Um, I could see where you might be confused, but the pattern that you get with Love Thy Neighbor is um, true to size. You just have to tape it together and that's it. You don't have to fiddle with it in any way unless of course you want to. John was all about, well, maybe you should do Love Thy Neighbor in red and put it above and below. Hey, I designed the pattern. I'm giving it to you. Do whatever you want. <laughs> it is yours. I mean, I could see it in the middle of a quilt or whatever. I love it when people take my idea and then run with it. That's, that's I think, how we evolve as quilt makers. So let me show you some red work pieces that I have that are antique. And um, I, I, I didn't even review them. I just, no, I'm going to have to stand up and get back a little bit. So I just had a real thing for these, for red work, for quite a while. And this is, you can tell it's old too, just by the, um, by the, um, fabric. Oh gosh, that is just beautiful. That is, you know, you could, well, you can't because it's mine and you don't have a pattern, but I can see some words being put in the middle of this. Now we're going to look um, underneath the skirt and look at the panties and see what the quilt maker, what the red worker did. So here's the back of it. All right. She's got some knots and stuff on it, but it's fairly clean. You don't have stuff traveling all over the red thread traveling all over the place. I'm going to teach you today how to not have to do knots at all. I, I love this technique. Okay. Then my friend just moved, Janet lied, and this came my way. Oh, God, look at that. Good morning. And I think these, these were put, and I would, it's fine if you wanna correct me. Oh my gosh, look at the lace edge. It's hand done, you guys. Wow, wow. Um, they would put these on their pillows to keep their pillows clean. And I think it's probably because of all the dirt and soot in the air. Um, that's what I think, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I just love this. Okay, let's see, let's grade this. Let's grade this person. So, uh, at least it's not like the stringy ones I showed you on Wednesday. All right, what's this one? Oh, here's another good morning. Here's another one. Good morning. Actually, I don't know why I don't do this on my bed right now because the quilt that I showed you on the road trip in the RV that Deb Silva made for me, it would be lovely to put this on each pillow. Except if I did that, you know that's exactly when Sparrow would decide that the bed is hers again. We've done pretty good at getting her out of there. Oh. I love this one. Here's a little baby with their puppy, with her puppy, and it says, can't you talk? <laughs> I mean, seriously, how many of you have thought that about your pets? Can't you talk, <laughs> please? Can't you tell me what you're thinking? Love it. All right. And then this one in my book is kind of cray cray. It's like it's backwards, the words. I'm dyslexic, so I can make fun of it. <laughs> like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. I, I have no, I'm trying to figure out what it says. I don't even know. 
but I have the feeling this person needed a lot of love and hugs, right? And then here's the one, the, the petticoat. What's it? Wait a minute. What's this one? Oh, that's one of mine. Okay. Well, this is from that book, Shadow Red Work. And this one says, I love you. Well, I don't know. I don't think it's in the book. I just did false advertising. It's not in the book. Okay. Um, but look at this. Imagine this. I'm going to have to, I know when I step back, it screws up the sound. But let's start with the lady that wore this. It's probably wouldn't even fit on my left thigh. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's her petticoat. My guess is that this was a, the woman that had this was a woman of means. And the back, is the back longer than the front? Yeah, the back is longer than the front. I think I paid 45 bucks for this at an antique store. I, right? I just, I had no idea that it was done on petticoats and things like that. So that's pretty darn cool. All right. All right. So let's get down here to doing a little red work. Here's my cloth. Bye bye. We're going down here. Okay. So I'm going to pull out a little bit right here. I have my little hoop. You know, one thing I didn't say the other day is that you could, you don't have to do this in red. You can do whatever you want. In fact, my old neighbor um, was an antique dealer and blue work apparently is quite um, uh, precious. If, if you find an antique blue work, um, something, you've got a, a find here. I didn't put in a needle threader uh, yeah, on Wednesday, but yes, I need a needle threader. And then I've got my needle. I don't know what brand it is. I don't know, but I know it's sharp. And it's the, <laughs> this is my coveted needle that I use for like everything, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is not lose this needle. I'm gonna, I just drew this out on Wednesday. I'm going to put this down. Again, this hoop is about, I'm gonna work on this. This hoop is four inches. Take it apart. Put this one underneath. You know, little kids can do this. And I did it with, I shared a while back, I did it with my grandies down south, and I think Lev was six. And, and I had her do her handprint and do a heart and she and did a running stitch different than what we're doing here and she could do it and it's quite a precious piece so here we have this all right then the next thing is the floss and again this is 817 dmc but you can use whatever you want it just doesn't matter now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you let's see let me pull out okay I'm going to find the end here, and you know with this thread, this DMC, it's six strands, right? It's six strands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out double of what I think I want the length to be, all right? Let me go up here to the camera. All right, so I'm gonna pull out, this is about how long I want the piece, the, the thread to be, so I'm going to double it. All right, so I would guess that this is about, about 18 inches in all. Gosh, probably more than that. Now, the way I learned was you would just pull off two, two threads, right? Uh-uh, you're just gonna take off one. And now is when you, there, I'm just gonna pull out one. And then I'm going to set this aside. All right. Let's go back down to here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fold it end to end. I don't know if fold it's the right word. But you can see I've got the two raw edges here. And then down here I have where it's folded or where it's bent. All right. So now I've got my two. Okay, then I do have to use a needle threader 
when I'm doing this. So how I use, I, and I've got every single needle threader in the world and this is the one I could put my hands on and it works fine. So I'm gonna put this through here. And if you have a needle threader, get two more because they break. At least they do for me. Get in there. Okay. And the trick is to find a needle, it's a sharp, I believe this one is, that has a big enough eye that you can thread through because I've got some exquisite sharps, but there the eye is so small, there is no way you're gonna get this thread through. Um, I mean, this is a heavier weight thread. So what you have going on here, oh, I've got my popping going on. There we go. This thing isn't hiding. What isn't hiding? There. Oh, there. My technical director just came in. All right. Whoops. So I want the loop to be the long end. Okay. That's where, quote unquote, the knot would be. All right. Then, oh, the other thing, and I spoke about this on Wednesday, I don't put anything on the back here. You can. I, you could put, I see people do thin batting and that's so that you don't see the traveling. Look how you can see through that, okay? Um, fabric prep might work, but I don't think it's thick enough. I like to do it dangerously and create a uh, challenge for myself so that I get it right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here. Okay, see the little O? Then I'm going to come up one fabric thread. I think I could even get a little bit closer. Yeah, I think that's okay. One fabric thread from the loop. Then I'm going to go like this. And there's your knot. Ta-da! You can do it on the back too if you want. But the point is, is that when you turn it over, it is clean as a whistle. Okay, I'll take a bow. I'll take a bow right now. <laughs> All right, now I was thinking about this before I came on. I'm a left-hander. So I'm gonna talk to you what I'm doing and then we will you do the opposite if you're a right-hander. I hold, oh, thimbles, 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 thimbles. I have the most glorious array of thimbles, and um, I mean, I've got good thimbles, like this one by Tommy Lane. I mean, it's called the Alexandra. Woo! Um, just a lot of really great thimbles. I do not use a thimble. I only use a thimble for when I'm hand quilting, and I always use a thimble when I'm hand quilting, but I've never really, and I use the thimble on my pointer finger. So I've never really learned how to use it on my middle finger, when I'm doing stitchery, like binding, applique, red work, so I don't use one. So what happens is, like when I was doing the kid's kitty pillow, it, my finger, this finger did get a little raw right in here. So this is a lovely product that you can get from your um, pharmacy. It's called New Skin. It's a liquid bandage, and it comes in spray, and it comes in like this iodine thing bottle. And it's just this, like, it's like rubber cement, okay? And so if you have a hole, you put it on that hole in your fingers and it putties up the hole and it takes about 30 seconds to dry. I This is my second bottle in 40 years, just as an FYI. And I believe the pharmacy had to order it for me. All they had was the spray and you don't want the spray. So, okay, I've got my little knot. I'm gonna hold my needle with my left hand. I'm a left hander, okay? And then I'm going to hold this thread to the side with my right thumb. So if you're a right hander, you would hold the needle with your right hand and pull this thread away with your left hand. Then I like to take, I take a little stitch about like this. Let me go and Okay, and I go like that. I'm gonna pull it over and I'm going to stitch again. And why this is important 
is that you want the threads all marching in the same order. Let's take another little one. Is it clear, John? As soon as John comes in, I get all nervous, Nelly. Okay. Okay. So when we tape in Livermore, I am so freaking excited about who's coming and the field pieces we're going to get. And two of the guys from the Colorado set are going to drive here to work with us. And they aren't even charging us um, days on the road or anything like that. I love these men. I, and if you've, if you've been on the show, it's a, a Zoomy and Huck. That's who's coming. Now, you know, Ricky is not going to be here. And, and it's just we're doing this all out of Corona, you know, safety and all that kind of stuff. So when you don't see him on the show, it's not a big deal. Hopefully we can Skype him in or Zoom him in at the beginning or something like that. But uh, the latest score on who's coming is I've got Joe Cunningham and Julie Silver coming for a segment. Those guys are, they are in my hood and they are a hood. So see how I'm staying on the red line too? I want to get down to the corner to show you one little trick. And I'm also going to show you a French knot. Okay, so almost down here. Now, I go to turn this right corner. This stitch could collapse. This, this stitch could collapse. So because of the direction I'm going, what I might do is just do a little sew over the stitch to hold it down in shape, all right? And then I come up and I start doing the same thing again. This is extremely meditative, extremely. And, and I just love the love my neighbor. I mean, I just, I don't want to get religious. I don't want anything, but I want you to know that I was raised that God is love. And it was about as simple as that. All right. Okay, so let's say I, okay, so one of the tricks is, okay, I come all the way around here. I am not going to jump across behind. I want the back to look as good as the front. I, I learned from a master embroiderer that the back actually should be as solid as the front. And I've never quite gotten there, but here we are. I don't want to put a knot in this, right? I mean, it's just so beautiful. I mean, there's where we started. So what I'll do then, is I'll just slide under the stitches. If I want to knot it, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, I will go in the same place. It's so arbitrary. I will wrap this thread around here, kind of like a French knot, hold my finger on it, pull this through, and there you go, you got your knot. If you want, you could do one more. And then um, the snips that you use, I mean, I just got these and I love them because you have no chance of going like that. Because they're rounded, I can just go like that. So these are really great. I use them for my machine quilting too. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a French knot. It would be great if I could start with a new thread, but I don't wanna waste this either. So I am gonna put a knot in, but man alive, I am gonna trim that sucker down. You know, and actually I'm not even sure I really would do this. I'm not really, I might even, uh, what would I do? I might even start with a new one and just get start with a fresh thread. So I'm going to do a French knot over here. All right. I love French knots. You come up. Okay. Let's see how it looks. It's not bad, but boy, I sure like that better. Depends. How, okay. Depends how much extra thread you have. So, oh, I don't want to see this. Get rid, go away. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a hold of this here. It's kind of like what we did. I gotta paint my fingernails. Blah. Go around like this. 
two or three times. It's your choice. Do not go in the same hole. Go in a, one thread to the side of your cloth, one thread of the cloth to the side of the thread. I'm holding it tautly here. All right? And I'm gonna pull it through. And there's your adorable little French knot. I just love it. Now where there are French knots on this pattern, put this down, okay, now how am I gonna finish this? Are at the end of the lettering. So I'm gonna go like this. Go like this. Snip like that. Let's take a look at the lettering. John figured out a new way to stream this so we've got much higher resolution, which is lovely. So you can see, okay, let's look at love. You can see like uh, here there's a French knot. Down here there's a French knot. And what I would, I, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the red first, okay guys? But then when you say get to areas like here, okay? You're gonna slide with the ecru, you're gonna slide underneath that. And the reason I don't mark it all at once is because it does shift, it does shrink, it does change. And the last thing you want is for things to start smearing all over. So you are gonna have to go under. And I suppose you could do the ecru first, but I think it's more important to do the red first and then get underneath the red with the ecru, all right? So how, how are we doing? Do we have, oh, I'm not done. I'm done with that. I'm not done with this. I wanted to show you something really cool. John, I, John I'm hoping if you have questions, you'll bring them in. Um, I wanna share what's new in the store. Remember, if you get shipping over 100 bucks, or products over 100 bucks, shipping's free. But people, we have been waiting for this. The 60 millimeter rotary cutter, woo! It's in the shop, so I'm very, very excited. You can use your uh, blades from other standard blades, but when you run out, come to us because they're of superior quality and they're less expensive. So this is in the shop now, yay! We've been waiting for a long time. And then the other thing I wanna show you, and John is getting questions here, so that's great. Um, what we're gonna be working on next is we're going to work with that little pattern book, with this little book. I'm not gonna tell you too much. Let me take a look at this. Oh, hold on. This question goes with that. We're gonna, hold on a second, hon. Ah, it's too technical. We're gonna go with this block tool, all right? And then we're, and then we're accompanying it with uh, Cave's fabric. But the other thing I want you to see and we're gonna bundle it. It's not available yet. People are going, I wanna buy it, I wanna buy it. It's not here yet. I got mine in the mail, but we don't have it. And we really cannot take your money early. Just, we can't right now, okay? But you can look on the screen here. If you look real carefully, we have got solids that they're gonna throw in. So we're gonna have, a, it's gonna be bundled with all those delightful solids. And then also we're gonna put some white in. And I already pretty much know exactly what I'm gonna be doing to show you, but remember, remember, quilts do have a mind of their own. Just like my little five-year-old that last night she started testing me. <laughs> it was just like, look at me, kid. Don't, don't screw around with Bubby. Okay, question. Does the old block tool, yeah, that'll work just fine. Uh, this one, this one just has, I think like 10, 110, and I think the old one might have 106 or something like that. So if I choose a block that's not in yours, just go pick another six inch block. All right, so yay. Okay, other question, John? Did you share that's just fussy cut, right? the pattern of the birds? On the sequoia. Um, on the original Sequoia quilt, Editor's Fabric had, go check and see if there's more. Is that a question there too? They think the thing backwards is eat, drink, be merry. Oh, okay, just a minute with that one. Go get more questions. Um, the original fabric that I did the Sequoia pattern out of, Editor had birds in that. So I just took that off that. And then when I had to create my, the deal was we had 
too much fabric left over. And so I said, just give me a bundle and let me play with it and make something. And so I couldn't steal Edita's imagery because that would be wrong on 10,000 levels. So that's why in your pattern, it just has kind of a funky little bird. And I have used that bird before in other quilts, that exact bird. So that's my bird. Uh, then this is like hilarious. The backwards one, I'm gonna like it even more if that's what it is. <laughs> Eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> Yeah, baby, that's my motto. <laughs> Eat, drink, and be merry. So um, in your, I, I hope this stitching gives you something kind of fun to do this weekend. And then this next week, I will do the thing on quilting design. That's going to take uh, three days. And then hopefully I could talk about binding and a couple other things. The CAFE fabric and the solids, the first shipment is already on its way. As soon as it's in our hands, we will take your money. Do not want to take your money till it's in our hands, all right? And we did double order, so I think there'll be plenty for everybody. And John's coming in for something else. I think someone came in late who wants to see the French knot again. Oh, the French knot? Just go watch the, the video again. The Just go watch the video. Put the middle one. But the, any kind of threads for embroidery. You know, you can do any kind of thread you want for embroidery. It's, it's a... It's a you know, it's such, there's so many threads out there, but if you're using like a thicker thread, like a pearl cotton, I probably wouldn't do my little knotless trip trick. Cause I think that I, if I were using like a heavier pearl cotton, I probably would just want it single strand, but I'd be very aware of what's on the back. So yeah, I'm not trying to blow you off on the French knot, but you can just, this will load as soon as we hang up. <laughs> It'll be on the front page of TQS, go down to playlist and you can just go through. And I say, I probably was doing it at about 25 minutes. All right. So, and I, sometimes your French knot's going to goof up. I mean, it just is. It, it, like, eh, what happened? Then you just carefully cut it away and go do yourself another one. So let me take away this overlay and see if there's anything else. Is that, is the house pattern you did somewhere? Yeah. Yes. The house pattern, go to the front page of the quiltshow.com and start clicking through. When you finally get to the page that you think it should be on and it's not, scroll down scroll down you cannot believe how many um how many people it's not there no it is scroll down that's it's actually funny when we're doing things on the website we're like when well, people don't scroll man they don't scroll they don't know I, maybe it's because i'm a dinosaur it's not on my page yes it is scroll and you should and it will then you'll upload it as a pdf and you can just print it out and it is uh to scale it is the right size. So anyways, you guys, I so appreciate you hanging out with me. It's, um, you're making my life. I get very lovely notes from you and I thank you for that, but you're making my life a better place. So it's getting me through all this craziness. It's just a little, I'm with my people. We're all together and just help me keep passing the word because the fact that we are on here from all over the world, as well as all over the United States speaks volumes to who we are as quilters, right? So I'll see you next Monday at 10 o'clock Pacific time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.